Hello, and welcome to Stories by Sarah Danielle. Today I have something a little different to share with you, but before we get started, I wanted to give you an update on Forsaken by Shadows. Season 2 is currently being beta-read by some incredible Instagram friends. Their feedback has been challenging, encouraging, and invaluable to the quality of the story. Come August, I will begin heavy revisions and edits, and start recording chapters. I hope to begin releasing chapters mid to late August or the beginning of September. In the meantime, I'm hard at work writing Season 3. So stay tuned, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled tour of the Underdark shortly. As for today, I wanted to share with you a little side project I wrote on my lunch break a few days ago. This story is a brief introduction to a character I designed to play in a Dungeons & Dragons one-shot. He comes from a world called Bonzarel, a setting created by Jonathan at Sojourners Awake. If you find yourself curious about Oleander and the world he comes from, I encourage you to check out The Bookish and the Brave and its spin-off seasons. The link will be in the show notes. Jonathan and his players create a rich and vibrant world full of unforgettable characters. I've been truly blessed to be a part of these stories. So check out Sojourners Awake, and enjoy the woeful tale of Oleander Pierce. My name is Oleander Pierce, and yeah, that's my real name. Or as real as any name gets when no one knows where you came from or who your parents are and they really don't care enough to find out anyway so they just call you Oleander because you're as pretty as a flower. And if you think that being named after a flower is a terribly cruel and degrading thing to do to a young boy growing up on the mean streets of Boshan, then congratulations. You're absolutely right. But hey, that's not my sad story. Actually, it turned out to be a bit of a blessing. Because you know what else Oleander is besides pretty? Poisonous. So incredibly poisonous. It's not even hard to grow and harvest. Facts I never would have known if it wasn't for all these pretentious adults cooing over how pretty my eyes were. And wouldn't you know it, kids who can brew up deadly toxins turn out to have a good life in the criminal underworld. Especially when they develop weird psychic abilities no one can explain like the power to link minds for telepathic conversations. You know who pays a kid well to join their heist for the benefit of silent comms? A lot of people. And when that kid can also make knives with his brain power, that kid gets to be in control of who he works for. So yeah, my childhood in Boshan was great. I was never short of friends and my belly was always full. I even got an education and learned how to read. Not bad for a street rat. But like the idiot that I am, I couldn't be content with it. Oh no. I had to go on and swallow the lie that I was meant for bigger and better things. So at the ripe old age of 19, I got a career change. I went from petty theft and grand larceny to the respectable, and far more deadly, business of historical artifact recovery. In other words, treasure hunting. Hey, don't knock it until you've tried it. Once you've experienced the euphoric rush of blood-pounding ecstasy that comes when you finally get that stupid chevron to lock down in that stupid puzzle that some long-dead tyrant stupid fanatical followers concocted to send hard-working tomb raiders like me to meet Garavin or Spiro, and then you find yourself standing in a room of ancient fortunes long unbeheld, pickpocketing just loses its appeal. And man, did I love artifact recovery. Sure, it's a bigger enterprise. You need a whole team and then the loot gets split. The jobs take longer and the work hits harder. But that blood rush, that high, that payout at the end is worth it. Oh, so very worth it. I got to see the whole world. From Myodaxar to Tetherna, even to the Scorch. I've been places most Boshan kids don't even get to hear stories about, and I've lived adventures the best in Dreamland couldn't author. I was sailing high on a road to early retirement, and nothing was going to hold me down. Until I met my Lady Cornolia, and it all came to a screeching halt. Okay, fine. I didn't really meet Cornolia, but I was in her temple so I'd like to think she was watching when I made a colossal fool of myself. 
In hindsight, I should have seen it coming. The snake motifs were everywhere, but we were in the jungles of Fresen. If this particular brand of religious zealots wanted to believe that Cornelia visited them in serpent skin, who was I to say otherwise? Well, as it turned out, there was more to the stucco than a scaly theme. And I'm not a complete idiot. Everyone knows that mysteriously lost treasure hordes are guarded by puzzles, traps, zombies, and curses. The latter two are usually related. Anyway, there we were, standing before the Great Vault of Time, which was supposedly full of the greatest treasure in all of Bonzerelle. I had some serious doubts about that. Everyone claims their ancient civilization is home to the greatest treasure in all the land. But hey, I don't need greatest treasure. I'll settle for mediocre treasure. Gold is gold and I am not picky. Of course, most scholars agreed Cornalia's great treasure wasn't gold, but secret knowledge privy only to the goddess of time herself. Great wisdom of the ages, great mysteries unraveled. Great, great, great. Everything is great. But if you had asked 25-year-old Oleander, he'd have told you that nobody bothers booby-trapping books and knowledge. <laughs> that kid was cute. So anyway, codes had been broken, puzzles were solved, all traps survived. Well, mostly. We lost two to the Pit of Swords, but accidents happen in this industry. Regardless, we were all professionals. We knew what was on the other side of that enchanted stone door. Curses and zombies. And gold. My curse breaker did his job. Disenchanted the door, swept for curses, declared it safe. I picked the lock, that exhilarating blood flood gearing up in my head. And then the door swung open. There was no gold. There were no zombies. There was only the curse. Except Moron Me didn't know it. All we saw was a big, empty room with a pedestal in the middle. When I stepped in, a great, it's always great, sparkling light materialized in the dome above, illuminating an exquisite map of the realms and stars. It would have been awesome to behold, if I wasn't too busy being ticked off that we'd done all this work for no payout. In an excellent display of intelligence, I marched right up to that pedestal, hoping to find another stupid puzzle to solve, because at least then we'd have a lead to follow. When I got there, I found it wasn't a pedestal, but a sundial, accurately displaying the time we knew it to be outside. Pretty cool, but not untold manifolds of riches and glory cool. In my frustration, I pounded my fist on the dial. Now. Let me back up a minute. I'm usually a pretty patient guy. I don't usually get all hot and bothered over things going awry. But it had already been a long day. We'd lost two men and my curse breaker was particularly annoying. I was running low on funds and what I had left was allocated to pay the folk who had traveled with me. And did I mention we were in the jungle? The hot, humid, buggy jungle? So yeah, I got a little mad in that empty room. Yeah, for once, I allowed myself to show a little bit of my frustration. Do you know what I got for it? You guessed it. Cursed. I would have preferred zombies. Here's a fun fact. When most scholars believe that a great treasure trove is in reference to divine knowledge, you, as a 25-year-old thief, are probably not smarter than them. The minute my hand slammed down on that stone, I was in another world. The crew said I just stood there, my eyes rolled up in the back of my head and shaking. Me? I stood in the void between time and space, reeling over the worst existential crisis this side of Interva. Here's another fun fact. Divine secrets of knowledge and time are only bestowed on the worthy. Who are the worthy, you ask? Beats me, because it sure wasn't me. All I got for my brilliant display of cunning and courage was a crappy consolation prize. It wasn't all bad. I did get some knowledge that day. Knowledge of Energia, Cornalia's sister whom she plotted to murder. 
Didn't know that until the story came crashing into my head, along with the guilt as if I'd done the deed myself. And with the knowledge came the sight. Now I see Energia everywhere she manifests, and my body is resilient to her effects. Resilient to poison as well. Don't ask me how I know. Sounds like a cool boon, right? Well, don't forget, this is a curse. Remember those pretty eyes of mine? Not so pretty anymore. When they slid back from viewing gods know what, they had changed. And so had my face. I have serpent eyes now. Gold like the metal I crave and slit with blackness down the middle. I have scales around my neck, scales around my scalp, scales on my shoulders and knuckles. When my curse breaker saw my eyes, he screamed and ran. We'd faced mummies in the scorch and vampires in dark delves. And he looked at me and screamed. I don't look that bad. Do you know they actually tried to leave me down there? Talk about an overreaction. But I guess the room did start filling with snakes. Something I would have been a lot more concerned about if I didn't suddenly develop a kinship with a reptile. I know what you're thinking. A bit of snake eyes and scales in exchange for seeing magic and resisting poison? Sounds like a great trade for a treasure hunter, uh, ancient artifact recovery specialist. What am I complaining about? Well, okay, it is kind of a cool perk to my job. But I'm a social guy. I like making friends. It's not so easy anymore when you give people the same skin-crawling dread as a cobra lurking in a cellar. All I'm saying is... When I walk into a pub and sidle up to a nice, respectable young lady and buy her a nice, respectable mug of ale, I'd like to have the adventure of seeing where the night might take us. There's no mystery anymore, because it always goes the same way. She takes her nice, respectable drink and flashes me at her nice, respectable smile, but the moment her batting eyes touch mine, that smile vanishes and cold sweat beads on her forehead. Suddenly, she's got somewhere to go, or someone to see, and I'm just a loser hanging out at a bar by myself. It gets kind of lonely, you know? And don't even get me started on the ladies who don't mind my serpent eyes. No thanks. I might be a snake-possessed, bred criminal, but I still have my standards. Any girl who's into scales and fangs is not a girl you want to be hanging around with. Trust me. It's not just the ladies, though. Even my old friends don't want to hang around me anymore. You'd think with my newfound magic scene superpower, along with my already epic psychic abilities, they'd be all over the opportunities. But no. Apparently I'm unsettling to behold and sold my soul to Graspin. So yeah, I'm between jobs right now. I even went back to Boshin, and the crew wanted nothing to do with me. Told me I could get a job with House Basile, but I passed on that. If there's any bloke creepier than me, it's definitely that Lord Basile guy. So I ended up at the one place where they don't actually care about what sort of horrifying snake-possessed monster you are, so long as you have a nice, juicy morsel of book to offer up. That gatekeeper fellow didn't even blink twice at me, which makes me wonder what kind of place this bald top library is if they've seen weirder than me. But hey, it's a steady paycheck, and a chance to get to the bottom of this curse. And, maybe, discover a few new ancient civilizations to pillage along the way. Did I say pillage? I meant recover. Thank you for listening to The Woeful Tale of Oleander Pierce, written and produced by me, Sarah Danielle. I genuinely hope you enjoyed this production. I had a lot of fun putting it together. And be sure to check out Sojourners Awake for more of Boshin, Bonzarel, and maybe the occasional Oleander appearance. Special thanks to Tabletop Audio for producing the music and ambiance used in this recording. And as you go about your adventures, beware of puzzles, traps, zombies, and curses. Happy treasure hunting.